Good morning, everyone in uh, North and South America. Let's not forget Canada as well. And of course, for some of us uh, based in Europe, it's definitely a good evening. So thank you for joining this combined webinar with the Sony and Nevian. My name is Cosimo Golano, and I'm the Director of Marketing Operation in Nevian. I'm based in Norway, in Oslo, and I will help you through today's webinar. Most of all, we're very happy to see that so many people can make this webinar today. And this is actually the very first public webinar with the Sony and Nevian together. This presentation lays out the benefit for broadcasters of the Sony and the Nevian partnership and explains why together the two companies are experts they can trust to transform their production. In today's webinar, Dion Lecon, Senior Manager IP and Sports Solution at the Sony Electronic, based in the US, actually New York, and Olivier Soir, Vice President Marketing in Nevia, is based in Finland, actually in Helsinki. They will be presenting for the first time in public the Sony and Nevian partnership and explaining why together the two companies are expert in helping broadcasters in transforming their production. I really hope you enjoy this webinar and uh, I'm very glad to give the floor to Olivier to start his presentation. Good. So good, uh, good morning everybody in, uh, in the Americas and good evening to those in uh, the US. It is uh, 7 p.m. here in Helsinki which is uh, capital of Finland, which is a Nordic country if you're not, uh, you can't quite position it. So it's next to Sweden on the on the western side and Russia on the eastern side. Um, so thanks for, for joining us today. Um, here's the agenda that uh, Dion and I will be covering today. Uh, I will start with a, a quick overview of uh, how we see the world from uh, from a broadcasting point of view and how broadcasters can gain competitiveness, uh, then Dion will take you through uh, our value proposition to the broadcasting industry, our joint value proposition, how Sony and Nevion can, hope, can help uh, broadcasters achieve that competitiveness that I'll outline in the, in the first section, uh, both in terms of overall capabilities, but also in terms of practical solutions that we can offer. Uh, then I'll take you through a few slides that actually explain um, the, a demo that we had planned for NAB uh, 2020. Uh, sadly, it, we never got to show it to anybody, um, but we feel it's actually a very good illustration of how our products work together, how our solutions come together. Um, and that explains in, in action, if you want, what, uh, what uh, Dion will be outlining from a, from a somewhat theoretical point of view, I guess. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through a summary and a conclusion. So we expect this uh, this presentation to last about 45 minutes or so. So uh, the good news, uh, well, the, the present situation for, for broadcasting is good and bad. Uh, mostly we hear about the bad, but the, the good news in some ways is that uh, there's never been quite so many people watching uh, linear television at the moment because obviously they've got time in their hands and uh, and they're, they're watching. Um, so even though it's difficult to translate that into into revenue because advertisers are also uh, affected by the present situation, there's a potential to build on this. Um, the other great uh, news in some ways is that this is actually an excellent opportunity to look at ways of transforming the business and using IP and IT in particular to be able to to, to transform the way um, broadcast production, live broadcast production is done. And here we, we see on this slide essentially the key to competitiveness going forward. On the one hand, there's the aspect of leveraging the strengths that broadcasters have, and particularly not just in relation to each other, but also in relation to the competitors they have, the same co the competitors for eyeballs that they have, be it social media, user-generated content, et cetera, et cetera. And that strength is really about the production values. So picking the very best ingest production equipment and systems, et cetera, to create that very special experience, which makes such a difference uh, compared to, to, to other competitors. On the other side, of course, um, broadcasters need to manage costs. Um, and managing costs means really two things here in this context. Firstly, achieving higher productivity, so transforming workflows 
uh, with better collaboration. So in, in enabling to be able to produce more content, more compelling content with a reduced uh, cost. And the second point is really using resources better in general. And here we'll come back to this a little bit later, but it's all about sharing equipment, facilities, studios, control rooms, but also staff across locations. So being able to leverage the very best talent across locations to produce in the live environment. And this is an opportunity that's brought about by uh, IP and IT. Now, there was a survey done by the IABM uh, a few months ago that asked the broadcasters what the, the key technology trends would be from their point of view. Uh, this, this survey was done pre-COVID, um, but what it shows here is that things like 4K, UHD production and delivery, which is really about this, this uh, increasing production values, is very near to the top. And at the same time, all this aspect of workflow transformation and resource sharing is, is coming next. So IP infrastructure, cloud-based computing, remote production, all those things are very much about improving the productivity in, uh, in production. So that really shows that this, what I was showing in the previous slide, is really reflecting what, uh, what broadcasters are telling us. The next slide is actually a follow-up survey that uh, IABM carried out, which was looking at the impact of COVID-19 and seeing which, which of those technical aspects actually become even more relevant as a result of our experiences here. And what you see here is virtualization, remote production, um, AI, SDI to IP, all those things become even more important in a world where it's more difficult to produce um, live content when, when there's social distancing and inability to, to, to move. So it's accelerating if you want that movement towards IP and virtualization. Now, what we're seeing here when we talk about this move to IP, there tends to be a focus on kind of technology looking at moving from baseband technology to IP technology, but actually it's much more than that. Um, at the same time as that is happening, we're also seeing a move from hardware to software. So a lot of the functionality that was previously delivered by bespoke hardware is now soft functionality, sometimes on, on um, specialized platforms, but it's still software. And then at the same time, there's a big increase in sharing resources. So whereas resources tended to be the infrastructure, the equipment tended to be very dedicated, there's a trend towards sharing. And this is leading really towards um, fully virtualized and shared functionality. So represented by a cloud here, could be a public cloud, could also be a private cloud, but at least a functionality that is effectively provided as a service. And this mega trend here is really leading this business transformation by revolutionizing workflows. And this is the journey that uh, is happening right now. And it's a journey that's very transformative, uh, but also obviously uh, in some ways a bit of a scary journey because it's so, so impactful on the business. And that leads us really to what we believe is important in, uh, in embarking that journey. We believe that broadcasters need obviously to pick the best products and solutions. That's, uh, that's something they have done for, for, for many, many years. But the, uh, the very important aspect that's really uh, come up now, particularly because, because of this transformational journey, is the importance of picking the right people. And in particular, picking the very best experience and the very best expertise. And this is really what we hope to explain in the next few slides, um, explain how Nevion and Sony together can provide the best of both of these. So I will now hand over to, uh, to Dion, who will take you on this journey and explain to you um, how we together can help you broadcasters uh, achieve the real benefits of IP. Over Perfect. to you, Dion. Thank you very much, Olivier. Greatly appreciate uh, everything that you uh, just discussed and I'm greatly appreciative of the fact that we can do this joint global webinar uh, for everyone here. 
uh, who's able to see uh, what Sony and Navion have really been working on in the way of bringing expertise and bringing the technology to the forefront of the market. Now, Sony and Navion, our strategic alliance really brings together two sets of unique capabilities, which we can use to unlock the potential benefits of IP live production solutions. Uh, on one side, you have Sony, and we are the leader in production solutions. And on the other side, you have Nevion, who's the leader in real-time media and virtualization. Now, both companies, through years and years of successful projects, ha are, have become trusted partners to many broadcasters across the world. And through our track record of working with broadcasters and facilities, uh, we're bringing together our expertise, our experience and vision really to create complete end-to-end -end IP live solutions that are unique and fulfill our growing customers' needs, the challenges that they face and the obstacles that they really need to overcome. Now, we've learned from IABM research that starting on the transformational journey, transformational journey to IP and IT is Broadca allows broadcasters to look to maximize the transformation of their workflows and their operations. Uh, but at the same time, they also want to minimize the risk involved in transforming their infrastructure and overall minimize their costs. The, the transformation is where customers need trusted partners who can help them on this journey. And as trusted partners, Sony and Nevion can certainly help with a unique expertise and experience that we've gained, uh, best-in-class products and solutions, a proven commitment to our successful projects, and together, Sony and Nevion provide the best IP production solutions for broadcasters. Uh, these solutions maximize the benefits of working workflow transformation uh, and minimize the risks involved in changing your entire production infrastructure from baseband today to IP tomorrow. And all of this will hopefully lead to generating more content and also minimizing your costs. So the journey is about products and solutions, but fundamentally it's about people and it's about services. Sony and Nevion offer our customers the peace of mind they require across the life cycle of a project. We, have, we both have professional services teams that provide global delivery and technical support services, including integration of third-party devices. And we can also support organizations throughout the IT service delivery lifecycle. This includes consulting services, solution design, project management, implementation services, and the list goes on. The key here is that you've already come to know Sony and Nevion for our pre-sales and our post-sales support. Now you can come to know us for designing and consultation. And you can, of course, look to us to train your staff, to train your personnel on this new and dynamic workflows that are going to be created as you transform your entire facility into an IP-based facility. Now, the solutions themselves, of course, are based on industry standards. We are very proud to be working with groups like AMWA on the NMOS initiative, uh, the uh, Video Services Forum, uh, AIMS, as well as the Joint Task Force on Network Media, as the entire industry is working to build solutions that are SIMT 2110 compliant. Now, this commitment to standards is not just cursory. Both Nevion and Sony have members on the boards of key standards bodies, and we're actively involved in helping to define the standards. Now, we agree that standards are not only implemented in products, but they must also be tested for interoperability. This will guarantee that when an end user or a broadcaster purchases solutions from various vendors, including Sony and Nevion and others, that when it all gets connected together, it works and you have the assurances that it will work. Now across the globe, Sony of Nevion have an, really an enviable track record of delivering projects. Nevion has been providing IP media network solutions since the early 2000s and has delivered hundreds of projects since then, both big and small. In 2019 alone, Nevion delivered solutions to over 150 customers in around 50 countries. On the Sony side, we've provided over 100 
IP Live solutions to customers worldwide. That includes OB vans, production facilities, that spans entertainment, news, sports, everything under the sun, Sony and Nevion together really represent hundred, hundreds of successful implementations that are helping organizations to embrace a business transformation to the convergence of IP, IT, and media. Let's talk about the solutions and let's talk about how in addition to combining our vast expertise, we've also combined the powerful solutions from each of our portfolios to create this, what we're calling the end-to-end -end IP Live production platform. Now, this is where we, where we are offering the building blocks for a next generation IP Live production system. The platform acts as your broadcast network controller, managing devices, connections, and network resources, a live production orchestration tool, allowing you to dynamically aggregate, configure, schedule the usage of production resources, as well as a network orchestration and monitoring tool giving intelligence to networks that allows for dynamic reconfigurations and redundancy. Now, the solution also leverages the extensibility of SDN so that content producers can build IP environments within a single facility or an enterprise across a network environment spanning vast geographical regions. So you see the layers here. What's very powerful are two things on this that I really want to call your attention to is at the bottom is the IP network. It is a ubiquitous COTS-based IP network from multiple vendors, including Cisco, Arista, Mellanox, uh, by virtue of the SDN uh, technology leveraged within this platform, we are agnostic to the switch vendor. Many of you as broadcasters have found yourself wondering uh, if you're going to have to dedicate yourself to a single switch vendor, and the answer here is no. You can have solutions from Cisco, Mellanox, Arista, and others, and you can truly build a COTS-based environment that can be managed and monitored at every layer. The other powerful point I want to call your attention to here is along the right side, and this is where the services comes into play. And this is what I was referring to earlier in the fact that Sony and Nevion offer training, consultative services, and professional services that can help you to build your next generation IP network from day one, in day zero, if you really think about it. Here's an example of an enterprise-wide deployment of IP solutions. It includes remote sites, main broadcast stations, local broadcast stations, and even venues and OB in a unified manner. The edge solutions include equipment and a comprehensive management layer, as well as services. Because each customer has a different starting point, and in practical terms, Sony and Nevion offer the following solutions, which includes IP in the facility, remote production, IP at the OB van, and distributed production and shared production. Now, distributed production we'll get into in a little bit, but it's really a combination of production between facilities as well as production in facilities or in, at the venue or in the OB van. To show it to you visually, think of shared production here in the facility. This is where you are building IP in your machine rooms. You are implementing IP-based switchers or cameras, um, IP-based replay servers or graphics machines. This allows all of those resources to be accessed across the facility by any control room or any studio needing to leverage that resource. It of course is built on industry standards, SMPTE ST 2110 and NMOS, and allows all of those devices to be connected and controlled utilizing the management layers that you see along the top. The live element orchestrator offering facility management, the IP live system manager offering the broadcast controller, and then solutions from Nevion, including video iPath, looking at the orchestration and SDN control of the network and the entire environment. Next up, you look at the OB van, and this is also built on 2110 and NMOS. So imagine that you have your production truck uh, parked outside a sports venue, and you need to bring those signals home run back to the facility. This platform allows you to do that. What's key about this image is notice that that bubble, the cloud that exists between the remote site with the OB van 
and the main broadcast station or the local broadcast station is connected via a WAN. Here is an environment, here's an example of how you can leverage LAN WAN convergence, where you now have Video iPath managing the network, and you can also implement solutions like Virtuoso from Nevion that can offer things like compression or media adaptation so that you can send signals across uh, network pipes of varying sizes. So now you're no longer limited to just a dedicated fiber link or a uh, dedicated LAN environment. You can deploy an enterprise-based solution across LAN and WAN environments. The next application is remote production. And this is allowing you to connect those production facilities uh, that are remote to your main pro production facility and really treat them as though they are local resources. Uh, your technical director really does not care where the production switcher lies within the environment as long as they have access to their control panel and can see their multi-viewer signals on the monitors in front of them. Uh, this is really driving the adoption of IP. We first saw remote production roll out to sports production. Now we're seeing it being used in news. We're seeing it being used in entertainment, in government applications as well, because broadcasters and content creators have really identified the benefits of deploying a fewer production staff on site or being able to cover more content using the same uh, production resources that are located at master control to cover multiple events in the same day. And then the granddaddy of them all, if you will, the end game, the really the goal for every broadcaster is what we call distributed shared production. And this is where all the resources from rooms, equipment, and people can be shared across locations, providing maximum flexibility and cost efficiencies. Effectively, all the solutions mentioned before are the building blocks toward this ultimate goal. And that's also why it's important to get the decisions right within those projects individually, at the remote site, at your broadcast station, at your remote station, and so on, so that this ultimate business transform transformation can be achieved. This is allowing you to connect cameras on the truck, cameras on the stadium, production switchers in your main broadcast facility and local facilities can now all be connected together through this environment and through this platform and can be orchestrated. Imagine having the ability to schedule a resource like a production switcher, the same way that you would schedule a conference room to hold a meeting. This is what this platform is offering in addition to the routing of audio, video, and metadata across the entire environment. So shared production in facility, uh, like I described, is a more effective and efficient use of the production resources within the facility. And there are already customers around the globe who have taken advantage of this workflow. Here's just a, here's a few, uh, including uh, Group TVA, which is based in Canada. They are the number one French language broadcaster that are now they are now utilizing IP technology for their current production and will plan to produce 4K and UHD content in the near future. One of the benefits of implementing IP means that they don't have to do a forklift upgrade of their baseband router infrastructure to get into a 4K environment. SIC in Portugal built a new facility and partnered with Sony to create an IP-based production environment for news and sports production delivered 24 seven. And there are one of the examples of customers that partnered with Sony to create this next generation workflow for a new facility uh, that they just implemented. I believe it went last year at the beginning of 2019. Now, OB van production presents a very interesting use case. If you think about very large sporting events and put remote production aside for a second, but think of large uh, uh, events where you have multiple production companies and multiple production units on site, and those production trucks have to share the content. In today's world, where you have two IP trucks coming up next to each other, they effectively have to drop down tie lines. That effectively means converting signals from IP to SDI, SDI back to IP to connect to another truck so that they can exchange signals. It's not very often that you're going to find production truck companies wanting to change their entire IP address scheme or change their subnets to allow for connectivity between the two trucks from potentially competitors, likely competitors. 
Uh, by utilizing this platform, what we're working towards is the ability for these two trucks to connect with each other and not only share signals without having to convert, convert from SDI to IP, but also share resources. Imagine a truck having one truck having the ability to control the switchers on both trucks or the camera feeds being routed into the home truck from the away truck without the need for conversion or controlling of graphics systems via NMOS or, or orchestrating those solutions to create one giant production environment contained in two uh, production units uh, using this platform. That is the goal that we're working toward. Now, some of the customers who've already implemented IP solutions on trucks include uh, CCTV in China, who built a next generation 4K UHD IP production truck with the ultimate goal of 8K production in the future. Now, as I mentioned before, remote production really was a driving factor for the adoption of IP technology across the broadcast market. It allowed for content creators to deploy fewer production staff. It uh, provided highly reliable transport with redundancy back to master control. And you even have the option for uh, encoding now with the uh, the advent of uh, codecs, uh, visually lossless, low latency codecs like JPEG XS that could be implemented in SIMT2110, allowing for content to be brought back from the remote site to master control. A great solution here, as you as you see on the slide, is something that Sony brought to market, uh, introduced at last IBC, uh, that's called the HDCE TX30, which is an actual camera adapter allowing you to connect the camera head to this camera adapter via SIMT fiber, and directly from the adapter you have SIMT2110 signals out. This gives you the option of running the camera without a CCU and directly connecting into a SIMT2110 environment. All of the signals that you would expect to find in a SIMT fiber environment are there, and you also have the ability to do RCP control of your main camera in addition to RCP control of a camera, like a box camera, connected to the main camera via the trunk line. You have full extensibility, and this solution will be supporting JPEG XS at the end of this calendar year. Remote production is really all about moving resources back to a central location for cost efficiency, uh, and also to ensure the highest level of production values. Uh, the best production equipment belongs in a central location. Nevion and Sony have a vast experience in providing remote production solutions, uh, and we stretch, stretching back over really a decade. Here are some customers that have leveraged uh, remote production utilizing Sony solutions. CBC Radio Canada designed a system allowing them to dynamically move camera heads around their facility via IP without the need of a complex SIMT fiber patching system. They also leveraged IP to produce the summer and winter games from their broadcast facility in Canada, significantly reducing the need to send personnel on site. And then the end goal, distributed shared production, is for any workflow transformation of an IP media network combining facilities, remote locations, OB trucks, uh, into a single environment. Uh, this allows resources, studios, control rooms, data centers to be shared across locations and production teams to collaborate in real time wherever they might be located. Sony and Nevion are delivering these solutions today. One example of a customer who's uh, built their IP facility across an enterprise includes TV2 Norway that built a cutting edge environment connecting multiple facilities via IP allowing those locations to share control rooms, studios, and resources across their enterprise network. So as a quick reminder, Sony and Nevion's solutions span the entire production workflow and can be scaled for a single facility or across an enterprise. If you're considering building a new facility or upgrading your existing facility, you should be heavily considering IP and you should definitely be reaching out to Sony and to Nevion. Now, with a look into the technology demonstration that we, we had planned for the NAB 2020 show, I'll hand it back to Olivier. 
what we wanted to do now is is take you through something that didn't happen but was ready to happen, uh, which was the the demo we had planned for for NAB 2020. Um, now we're showing it to you for a number of reasons. One is we were really quite pleased with this demo and it was going to be quite exciting. Um, but we also feel that it's actually quite a good illustration in a in a microcosm, in a small sort of way, of all the things that Dion has just been talking about. So what I'll take you is on uh, on an imaginary journey. Imagine yourself back in uh, in April and you're in Las Vegas and it's nice and sunny outside and uh, you're coming either to the Nevion booth or the Sony booth or both and this is what you you could have experienced. So what we had planned is a demo that spun three locations, the Nevion booth, the Sony booth, which weren't in the same hall, by the way, and um, a remote site at the Luxor Hotel. And I'll explain to you what you could see in each of those in the next slide. Uh, so basically, let me put it this way. Um, what we were effectively simulating here is is a is a distributed production, I guess, as uh, as Dion just talked about. The focus, in a way, is what is happening in the Luxor Hotel there at the on the bottom uh, of the screen, and there we were simulating uh, an e-game tournament. Uh, so we plan to have people playing uh, some e-games there um, with two cameras filming this. Uh, fixed camera and a, and a PTZ camera. And then the other two locations were effectively also part of that production. So on the Sony booth, we had, if you want, the central location uh, with the control room, uh, the machine room was also there. Uh, and we also had a 4K studio, which was in fact the uh, the camera area, the area where we demonstrate, where Sony demonstrates all the various cameras, allows people to uh, to, to use those cameras, test them and feel them. And then on the Nevion booth, this could be considered as a maybe a regional um, uh, or a regional broadcast uh, location with one camera, so a small studio, I guess, and a small control room. And the idea of, of this demo uh, was to be able to show all the things that I was just talking about. Uh, you can see the whole list of equipment. There was quite a lot of equipment there, both in terms of cameras, in terms of uh, switches, um, control panels. Uh, there were um, Telestream Prism, for example, for analysis. Uh, and the big screens were used for both multi-viewers, but also uh, to show some of those products that uh, Dion talked about, the management uh, layer products. So this is what you would have seen, and in a minute I'll take you through what you could have experienced, and then I'll explain what was happening under the hood. So the first simple thing that we would have liked to have shown you is uh, is the ability to set up a production environment. So uh, as you can see, there's a there's a zoom into a, a couple of the control panels there that were on the Sony booth. Uh, these are control, control panels to uh, Sony's Leo. Um, and the idea there is that with the touch of a button, and maybe you can see in, on the lower part of the, that zoomed in picture, maybe let me see if I can get this highlighted so that uh, there we are. There's a laser pointer here. So hopefully you can see there's two buttons here. Hopefully you can see my pointer, 4K and HD. And basically those buttons would enable us to set up either the 4K production taking place in the pretend 4K studio in the camera area, or the HD production, effectively the remote production going on in the Luxor Hotel. So let me uh, let me return to the pointer. Uh, uh, there we go. So I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's hovering now on that 4K little button in the in the zoomed up area. Now, if I press this button, what you can see is all the cameras become online, um, but more importantly, all the configuration is automatically done for all the pieces of equipment that you would be using here. So in the in the um, in the the the, the, the multi viewer, for example, would be set up to show those relevant cameras for for the 4K um, studio. Uh, the control panels would be set up for that 4K production. And all this would be done automatically at the touch of a button. 
And similarly, if I go back to my HD button, exactly the same would happen if we put, pre press the one button. Suddenly, the Luxor Hotel becomes uh, the the studio, and all the equipment that was previously used for the 4K production now becomes fully enabled, fully set up, fully configured for use in the HD production in Luxor. And that that's one of the beauties of of what we're offering here is that at the touch of a button, you can literally control either a studio or any studio that's local to you or remote. And in a minute, I'll explain what's happening under the hood around this. The other thing that we plan to show you um, was actually um, the ability to do a, a simple remote production. So again, I ask you to, to imagine things and then imagine what it would have been like in, in real life. Um, and the idea here is that we could control from the, the small area in the Nevion booth, pretty much any of the cameras in any of those locations, as well as the PTZ camera there marked with a P in the Luxor Hotel. So you'll see some of those cameras are marked. There's number four here, number three on the, on the right-hand side, number one is in the Luxor Hotel and P is here. We also have a uh, fourth feed or a fifth feed, I guess, uh, which is marked as number two in the Luxor Hotel. And there, the idea was we were going to use actually the output from the from the uh, from the e-games as an input as part of the production. So if I go to my small control panel here on the left-hand side in the big left-hand bubble, I don't. Know, hopefully, you can see my cursor. You can see numbers here, one, two, three, four, and MV, MV standing for multi-viewer. And quite literally, the idea was that at the press of a button, we could suddenly, for example, if I pressed one, this camera here, the feed from the camera in the Luxor Hotel would be routed, routed straight back through the Sony booth, which if you remember, that's the central machine room and control room, and then back onto the Nevion booth and displayed here on the left, on the Nevion screen. Uh, similarly, I could pick uh, the input, uh, for example, I've lost my mouse, unfortunately, there it is. I'll press number two on my control panel here, and then suddenly it's the input from, or the output from the, the game itself that goes through the same routing and then ends up on the screen here. I could also, or we could have also picked a camera in the, on the Sony booth here, I've pressed number three, and you can see camera three on the in the 4K studio being highlighted, um, or indeed the camera on the uh, on the the Nevion booth if I press four there. Uh, this functionality was of course also available from the Sony booth. So if, if you can imagine, this shows you how a a remote event could be produced from either location with the control room capability. And that's very powerful because it also means that the people involved don't need to be at a particular location to be able to do what they need to do. We also had planned, obviously, to uh, have the, the PTZ camera here uh, available and controllable from, uh, from the Nevion booth. So we have a little simulation here. If I press uh, the big P on that, um, on that uh, handle here on the on the controller uh, then you'll see on the the Nevion screen a uh, sort of panning going on so we would have been able to pan and zoom and tilt the camera and and pretend effectively to produce a live content now i can't say the content will ne would necessarily been uh, very compelling but uh, that wasn't really the point of the exercise so that is what you would have seen um, what I'd like to take you through now is how this actually worked. So if you remember the the uh, the picture that I just showed you, this is actually what was happening under the hood. So what you see here is uh, in dark blue, I guess, Sony blue, as it's known, uh, the Sony equipment. Um, actually, with the exception, actually, I don't know why, but the, the router in the middle there should not have been blue. Um, should have been green. It's from from Nevion, uh, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and the equipment in in green is from from Nevion. So I'll just hide it briefly here by pressing on the the hide equipment button here. 
And that will give you a view of really what really matters, which is this whole network configuration. The rest is connectivity to the network. So what you're seeing here is uh, a simple network, of course. Again, it's a demo, uh, but there's a lot of real life aspects to it. So you're seeing here a network that has multiple vendors involved. So the Sony booth has Cisco um, equipment. So it's basically a Cisco LAN. The camera area is a, a mini Cisco LAN. The hotel in Luxor has its own little LAN as well. But on the Nevion booth, we have a combination of Arista equipment. And as I said, this should have been green, um, our own eMERGE switch. Um, and all this is controlled seamlessly by the uh, management layer above that uh, Dion um, explained in, uh, previously. What you're also seeing here is that the architecture we've, we've used is essentially a spine leaf architecture. So those, those uh, routers that are topmost, uh, both in the Nevion booth and the Sony booth are the, the spine routers. And then all the, the ones below that, so the eMERGE on the Nevion booth, uh, the uh, other uh, routers in in the, the the other three clouds are also um, leaf routers as part of uh, of this network. And we've also illustrated here some redundancy. You can see uh, two connections between uh, between the Nevion booth and the Sony booth, providing full redundancy there. And we also had redundancy to the camera area. Uh, you will have noticed there's no redundancy uh, between the uh, Luxor Hotel and the Sony booth. In the real life, obviously, we would have had fully redundant, a fully redundant network, uh, but this was purely for illustration purposes. Okay, so let's see how we use this network to achieve what I showed previously. So remember, the first thing I did was set up a, uh, a 4K production, which happened to be in the camera area of the Sony booth, so the little box on the right-hand side. So imagine you're pressing on the, the Leo uh, control panel here. What happens is as I press on the control panel there, um, the signal goes up to the back-end part of uh, the live element orchestrator. Uh, which is the facilities management. And you will have seen what happened that you, while I was talking is uh, all the equipment that needs to be configured. Do you remember all the control panels, the the uh, uh, the multi-viewers, all that was set up uh, automatically and configured ready for action. So that's one point is that configuration point. The second point is that Leo also, and this is part of the work that we've been doing together as uh, two companies, would also have passed on that information to Video iPath, which would have done all the network setting to enable the the, the SDN effectively uh, to control the flows from the cameras to the various destinations. So literally at a touch of a button, through the help of the management layer, all this has been set up in one go. Similarly, if we look at uh, the uh, HD production, um, the same happens basically. So a little touch on the control button will go straight up to Leo, which will configure the various parts in the, or the various pieces of equipment, both in the control area and also in the uh, remote location. And then Video iPath will then configure the network to make things happen. And that's it. We're all set up, ready to produce either in 4K or in HD. If we look at the remote production, so this was the second scenario where I was showing you how from the Nevion booth we could take uh, take control or, or access any of the of the um, signals from any of the the, the cameras within this uh, this shared distributed network. Let's take an example. So let's let's imagine we wanted for a minute we wanted to switch to that PTZ camera in the Luxor Hotel, and we wanted it to appear on that uh, monitor on the left-hand side here on the Nevion booth. So what's happening here, we'll press on the control uh, panel on the Nevion booth. This connects to the live IP live system management uh, layer from, uh, from Sony, which would then communicate with video iPath, 
which would then set up all the connectivity. So let's see what happens once that connectivity is done. And then you can see the signal is transported by uh, over, over well, effectively three LANs um, over to from the uh, Luxor Hotel to uh, the Nevion booth. What you'll also notice there that's going on is that we actually used uh, JPEG XS, the encoding capability that uh, Dion referred to earlier, as part of this demo. So you can see the PTZ, the output of the PTZ camera goes into uh, the Nevion Virtuoso, which does the encoding into JPEG XS. That gets transported from the Luxor Hotel onto Sony's booth, where the uh, signal is um, decoded, uncompressed. Uh, the uncompressed signal is used within the Sony booth because, as I explained, any of those signals could be watched on any of the screens on the on the Sony booth as well. Um, and then that gets re-encoded over uh, through the second uh, virtuoso on the left-hand side of the Sony booth, all the way and transported all the way to the Nevion booth where it's decoded again and shown um, on the screen. And the reason for doing this is we want to show a number of things. So JPEG XS is, is a, a new encoding capability that that combines really the the, the best of uh, mezzanine compression. So the JPEG 2000 that we've known for, for so many years, it's got a similar um, compression ratio, so about one to eight, one to 10. Um, but the big difference is that its latency is very low. It's subframe. Uh, which is which is very important. Um, it's 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 of the same order of magnitude as uh, Tico or VC2, if you're familiar with those uh, encoding technologies that uh, are used typically for for 4K. The other aspect that is uh, important with JPEG XS is that it's multi-generational. So we only had two sets of uh, encoding decoding in in this demo, but essentially. Uh, you can keep encoding, decoding, and because of the low latency, it, it lends itself not only to uh, WAN transport, but potentially within a, a local area network because it can it can be performed at such a low latency and with a with a with a very good performance from a, from a visual aspect. So as you can see, there was a lot of things and many more things that we're not covering here, but there was a lot of things that we were planning to show at NAB. Um, and I hope that by taking you through this virtual demo, we can illustrate the sort of capabilities that we we can offer, the capabilities that were allowed uh, outlined by by Dion earlier. So that brings uh, me to the end of uh, this demo. Um, so really, in summary, um, the take homes, if you want, you've had to sit through a, a number of slides here, is is really uh, the following points. Uh, top top of it really is that experience and expertise because as as I mentioned as as Dion ex explained this is a journey this is a journey which has risks potentially for, for for your business and nothing replace experience and expertise and Sony and Nevion together have a lot of that because we have over well many hundreds of projects as references when when combined our offering is end to end, and this is something you saw Dion explain literally from uh, from the remote venue to the regional venue through the the central facility. It's LAN WAN convergent. This is the key aspect that allows us to consider these uh, this 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 uh, distributed production effectively consider the whole of the IP production as one single entity. It's uh, it's a set of products and solutions that are scalable and expandable, and we have proof points from that. We've done many projects with tens of thousands of, uh, of um, signals running at the same time, so quite exceptional. All this based on standards, of course, and I'll come back to that. Now, I talked about scale here, but obviously it doesn't mean that we can't start small, and most of our customers tend to want to start small, but they need to grow with needs. And again, Dion mentioned that. You have to have your eye on the big prize, which is eventually you want everything to be IP, everything to be considered as a as a single entity. And the choices you make on those smaller projects 
are very important in determining how well you can do achieve that end game. Standards, I mentioned passionate about it, not just uh, uh, paying lip service to, to, to standards, but actually part of defining them, implementing them, testing them, and of course, promoting them. And, and we have a number of projects, or <laughs> all our projects are, are based on standards, 2110, NMOS, we have quite a track record. And from, uh, from a point of view of, uh, of uh, providing choice, standards is obviously very important, but so is the ability to, to handle a multi-vendor COTS environment, which is for switches, which is what we illustrated in, in this demo. So that really brings to an end the, the main part of the uh, presentation. I'd like to bring on uh, Dion maybe again. Um, I, I just thought it would be good to, to, to share briefly a perspective from both companies. I know from a, from a Nevion point of view, um, the, lot, the past year of working together has been very good. There's been a, there's been a lot of common ground, a lot of uh, compatibility, not only at the product level, but actually at a, at a people level. Um, so the, the two companies are really working very well together, have a very similar attitude to delivering project, a real can-do attitude and, and keeping at it. Um, so it's been a very good experience. And of course, from our point of view, from the Nevion point of view, where we have been specialists in, in networks, which is very important, of course, um, but when we're dealing with bigger projects, we have to have a bigger footprint and Sony brings that with, uh, with abundance, both in terms of product solutions, but of course, expertise. So uh, I don't know if you want to add to that, uh, Dion, from, no, from your perspective. And the feeling is absolutely mutual. Um, I think this partnership really shows the market um, and it really, there is nobody else out there that can offer what Sony and Evian are offering together, this kind of end-to-end -end approach to IP-based deployments. And I really found, I found a lot of value in the interactions with the entire Nevion team uh, and looking just at uh, the way our solutions complement each other so well. Even I was impressed uh, when the announcement was initially made. Of course, I knew a little bit beforehand that it was coming. Um, but I think a lot of people in the market, the more and more we've discussed this with broadcasters and content creators, they've been impressed by how quickly we've been able to come along. Uh, usually partnerships like this uh, start off slow and then something big kind of comes at the end. We're able to deliver something big right up front. Uh, in addition to the solutions and products that we offer, it is the expertise, it is the people, it is the experts that you have access to that are willing to work with you from day one. So I personally, and I know I, could, I say I can speak for the rest of Sony, we're looking forward to how this grows and evolves and what we're able to bring to the market for our customers. Well, I would like to say thank you to Dion and Olivier for this great presentation explaining the Sony Navion partnership and of course providing an understanding why together Sony and Navion are expert that broadcasters can trust to transform their production. Most of all, thank you for you guys uh, participating and following us uh, for this webinar and this journey to the real time media market evening. So until next uh, webinar with the Sony and Navion, goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone.